In the last video we showed that the cos of the compound angle A minus B could be written in terms of the cos of the component angles A and B and the sine of the component angles A and B. By replacing B with minus B we got a similar identity for the cos of A plus B. It just changes sine from plus to minus. Now in this video we're going to do something similar for the sine of A plus B. We're going to write sine of A plus B in terms of the sine and cos of the component angles A and B. First we need to consider how to simplify this here, the cos of 90 degrees minus x, where x is any angle. Now we could just use this identity here to do it, uh, by simply plugging 90 in for A and x in for B. So let's do that. Well, we get cos of 90 times the cos of x. Then we have plus the sine of a, which is 90 in this case, times the sine of x. So I've just replaced a with 90 and b with x in this first identity. Now the cos of 90 is naught. Now, you can do that in your calculator, of course, or you can just remember that in the unit circle, we're dealing with an angle of 90 degrees. The coordinates of a point on the unit circle give us the cos and sine of that angle. The coordinates of this point here on the unit circle are 0, 1. So the first coordinate is the cos, the cos of 90 is 0. The second coordinate is the sine, the sine of 90 is actually 1. So we see that the cos of 90 is 0, the sine of 90 is 1. So we get sine of x. So the cos of 90 minus any angle is the sine of that angle. Actually this is easy to see if x is an acute angle. Let's just see it for the case where x is an acute angle. So if this angle is x in a right angle triangle, then the angle up here has to be 90 minus x. Because these two angles must sum to 90, if the three angles sum to 180. So how do we get, say, the cos of 90 minus x? Well, we put the side adjacent to it, which I'll call a over the hypotenuse, which I'll call h. So the side adjacent to 90 minus x is this side here, and the hypotenuse is h. So we can see that the cos of 90 minus x is equal to a over h. But what about the sine of x? Well, the sine of x is the side opposite x. But you see, the side opposite x is the same as the side adjacent to 90 minus x, which is a. And since sine is opposite over hypotenuse, we get a over h. So you can see that the cos of 90 minus x equals the sine of x for the case when x is an acute angle. That means we can construct this right angle triangle. But it's true in general for any angle x using this first identity here. Now the next thing that we do is we replace x with a plus b. That's how we can bring in sine of a plus b. x, remember, can be any angle. So I'll copy this out, replacing x with a plus b. Now I can take the minus sign in here and we've three angles, but of course by the associative law we can take any two of them we like to begin with, so I can bracket off the 90 minus a here. So this is just the associative law for addition, of course. Um, so now, why did I do this? Well, we can now apply this top identity again to this function here, but this time a is 90 minus a, and b, well, b is just b. See, we can apply this identity here. So what are we going to get? We're going to get cos of a, where a is now 90 minus a. So we can think of two angles in here. a is 90 minus a, and b is just b. So the first angle is a, which is 90 minus a. By the way, these a's are not the same. It's just a labeling device to help us use the identity. So that's the cos of A, and then the next term in this identity is cos of B. Then we have a plus sign, 
because we're getting the cos of a minus b and then we have the sine of a that's the sine of this here and um, we have to multiply that by the sine of b so now what about the cos of 90 minus a? Well, that's where we apply this result here that we proved earlier. So we replace cos of 90 minus a with sine of a. So we get sine of a times cos of b here. Now, what about sine of 90 minus a? We can actually prove that the sine of 90 minus a is the same as cos a when a is an acute angle. Let's just refer back to this triangle again. Um, so x is any acute angle. So the sine of 90 minus x is opposite over hypotenuse. So let's suppose that this is the side opposite this angle. I call it A. And hypotenuse is H. So the sine of 90 minus x is opposite over hypotenuse. That's not, that's not adjacent, that's actually opposite. Um, this is actually the side that's opposite this angle. But the cos of x is the side adjacent to x which is a divided by the hypotenuse so it depends on which angle we're talking about if we're talking about 90 minus x the side opposite 90 minus x is a um, but if we're talking about angle x the side adjacent to x is a so we can see that these are equal at least when x is an acute angle so we can write cos of a here so sine of 90 minus a is just the cos of a, where x is a. Now we can actually prove that the sine of 90 minus a equals cos a by referring to the top identity here. But I won't do it. Um, I've only proven it for the case where a is an acute angle, but you can uh, it's actually true in general where A is any an any angle. Actually as an aside I'll just do a quick proof that sine of 90 minus A equals cos A. Um, I'll do this without referring to the identities that we proved in the last video. Well here's one approach. There may be a quicker approach but anyway um, I just took a minus sign out of this here. So you know, if we take the minus sign in, we get minus a plus 90, same as this. But then we use the fact that the sine of a negative angle is minus sine of the angle. So we can actually take this minus sign outside. So that's just using the fact that sine of minus x is minus sine x, where x in this case is a minus 90. Now let's consider the unit circle. That's a circle of radius 1. So I'm not showing the circle, but um, I'm showing pints on the circle. So let's take an angle A that's not an acute angle. Uh, we know that this is true when A is an acute angle. But let's t say a, a is some angle between 90 and uh, um, 180, just to show that um, these are equal in that case. So um, we measure A anticlockwise from the positive x-axis. That means on the unit circle, the coordinates of this point are cos A, sine A. Now we're interested in a minus 90 degrees, so we subtract 90 degrees from the angle and we get this angle here, which is a minus 90. And we know that the coordinates of this point on the unit circular are given by the cos and sine of a minus 90 degrees. Now we're interested in the sine of a minus 90. That'll lead us to the sine of 90 minus a by just a sine change. Well, uh, that's just this distance here. It's the y value of this point. But you see, we can imagine this line being rotated through 90 degrees um, anti-clockwise. So this vertical line becomes a horizontal line, this distance here. In a similar way, actually, this horizontal line here becomes the vertical line here. So you can just think of the slope of two lines, actually. Um, you know, from coordinate geometry, um, if we know the slope of one line, then to get the slope of a line that's perpendicular to it, we just invert the slopes. So anyway, the lengths of these two blue lines are the same. But you see, for this particular A, 
because of a is negative because we're dealing with a point in this quadrant the x value of this point is negative so the cos of a is minus this length here this here is positive because this point is in this quadrant the y value is positive so we just get minus this and uh, that's what we have to show here minus the sine of a minus 90 is just the same as sine of 90 minus a so anyway I've just shown it's true for an angle a between 90 and 270 or 180 and then you can go on and show it's true for other values I'm not going to bother doing that it's probably just enough to show that um, sine of 90 minus a equals cos of a when a is an acute angle actually what I did up here so now we've proven this identity here for sine of a plus b so how did we get the second identity well just like in the previous video we take this first identity and uh, replace b with minus b so I'll quickly run through that So I replace b with minus b and then we use the cos and sine of negative angles so the cos of minus b is actually just the cos of b the sine of minus b is minus sine b so we can take the minus sign out here so this plus becomes a minus so we get so we see that when we want to go from plus to minus here we just change this sign 